So this is it. This is where we're gonna be staying for the next 24 hours. Not too bad. Two beds. So if I wanted to guess, I could have one. Got a fireplace, some firewood to keep us warm. So we can make it through the night. Very cozy vibe in here. Good morning. It is freezing cold. <laughs> Got down to like 20 degrees Fahrenheit last night outside. Luckily, it doesn't get that cold in the back of the van because I'm pretty insulated, but it does still get pretty cold. This is where we slept last night in front of this convenience store gas station. And I've been here for like the last 24 hours, along with 50 other truckers who have been stuck here. Because up until this morning at 7 a.m., the highway that is up there, AKA Interstate 40, has been closed because of the snow. And last night there was 50 trucks over there and 50 trucks over there, all sleeping. But once the highway reopened at seven, all of them took off and were out of here. So I'm kind of the last one remaining. I also woke up about 30 minutes ago kicked my heater on and just laid in bed and waited for it to heat up in here. So it is finally starting to get warm. So I can finally get up and start getting my morning started. Now that we are awake and moving and I can get changed without freezing to death, we can get out of here. My clothes are so cold though. It's like putting on an icicle. Today's video is gonna be a little bit different than my normal videos because yesterday I was looking around and I found a very unique opportunity. And if you guys aren't familiar with my channel, or maybe this is your first time watching, my name's Ryan, I live in the back of my self converted camper van and I travel around the country documenting cooking, checking out cool places, and just living in the van. And typically that's where I spend my videos, is in my van. But tonight, we're gonna be staying in a traditional Navajo Hogan in the middle of the desert. It's cold out. But, I went to the gas station, got myself some grapes, coffee for breakfast. So let's get out of here. So, a Hogan is a traditional Navajo structure, and it's deeply ingrained within their culture, so these huts are a lot more than just a shelter to the Navajo people. They're a place of religion and spiritual rituals and prayer, and even today, if you own a normal house and you spend most of your time in a normal house as a Navajo, you have to have one of these traditional Hogan huts in order to have these rituals and have these prayers. And there's a lot of interesting history to go with that. but. There are two types of Hogans. There is a male Hogan and a female Hogan. And tonight we're gonna to be staying in a male Hogan, which is typically the smaller of the two. It's more cone-shaped as opposed to more rounded. It's just kind of a wooden teepee covered in mud with two cots and a stove. So we're gonna be using that fireplace to stay warm and maybe cook some meals and spend the night on the Navajo Nation land in a traditional Hogan. Should be interesting, but we got about an hour and a half, two hour drive till we get there. We have made it to Flagstaff. Making a quick pit stop here. Some of these roads aren't really plowed yet, but they're drivable, it's nice and compact. But I gotta stop by Walmart and pick up some ingredients for the dinner we're gonna be cooking tonight. So this Hogan that we're staying in tonight has a uh, fire pit that you can cook over inside. And I think I'm gonna make myself a stew and some rice pudding, but I'm gonna head inside and uh, microwave this trip and grab all that stuff super quick. starting to snow again, actually. I'm gonna go ahead and get all these put away, and then we are heading to our camp spot for the night. All right, groceries have been put away. Let's hit the road. And we're not too, too far away. Hopefully, uh, there's a lot less snow where we're going, because it is at a couple thousand feet less elevation. for about 15 minutes and there's already significantly less snow. There's only about an inch on the ground where I am. And we still have over 2,000 feet of elevation to go down. So I feel like once we get down there, there shouldn't be any snow.
into the desert we go. This is actually gonna be my first night ever since I moved into the van sleeping on Navajo Nation land or Indian territories because it's kind of separate from the US in the way that it's there's no BLM land. Typically anytime you come onto any American Indian land you gotta get permission. Luckily tonight we do. There she is. Home sweet home. Beautiful out here. So quiet and literally nothing around other than the hut we're sleeping in and some storage and stuff over there. That's nice. This has a lock on it. Wonderful. Nice fireplace right in the middle. I guess you could fit two people in here. And I think this might be for clothes. Oh no, it's got a stove in here too. Nice. Okay, I don't think we're gonna be using that. I think we're gonna cook on this. Got a bunch of firewood. And this is it. It's a lot roomier than I expected, I'm gonna be honest. But definitely gonna have to get that fire going tonight because it is already quite cold and it's only gonna get colder. But pretty cool. Couple lanterns. Wonder if these lights work. Oh, nice. And we got light all around. And flashlight if we wanna go exploring out at night, which I don't think I'll be doing. I think that's the pooper. This is a traditional Navajo Hogan. And as I said before, it's a male Hogan, which is more of a teepee shape. The female Hogans typically have a rounded shape, so it's kind of like a dome. And we're staying here for the next 24 hours. I think now that we've kind of gotten a feel for the place, I'm gonna grab some supplies from the van. It's actually even snowing here a little bit. Some light flurries. Looks like there's rain off in the distance too. <clears throat> but anyways, let's get what we need other than our food, because once we leave, other than to get the stuff we have in the fridge, I'm gonna try not to come back in here. I think we've got everything we need. Come back and get the food in about an hour, hour and a half. I'm gonna start making some dinner. But it is time to say goodbye to the comforts of my van for the night and say hello to our Hogan home. This is pretty cool that the uh, people that live out here allow people to stay here. I saw this opportunity and I thought to myself how cool it would be to stay here, so here we are. And I think I'm gonna get these lights turned off for now until we need them at night because I can just leave this door open and it's pretty well lit from the outside. Oh. Oh, it's actually so comfortable. Wow, <laughs> this is pretty cool. Looks like we've they've given us really everything we need. I guess I didn't really need to bring much. So we've got our own wash basin, some kindling, I'm guessing what that is, some already pre-chopped firewood, and then some of this stuff. So I'm gonna chop up some of this stuff, I think a little bit smaller. Oh, it's already set up for me. That's nice. I guess I don't have to do that. Thought I was gonna have to do some chores once I got here. But we've got, Bug spray, shampoo, conditioner, and then towels, body wipe, and then under here I'm pretty sure is a first aid kit. But So, I think first things first. Let's get this fire started. Hopefully that's enough. We'll let that start up a bit, and we will throw on some of those bigger logs. Yeah, but from what I understand, and what I read online, this place is still used as a Hogan and ceremonies and prayer is done in here. Obviously not right now, but when they don't have guests, it's still used today. Pretty interesting. I think part of the Navajo culture is you're supposed to have one of these, no matter where you live or what kind of house you have in order to be able to do those kind of ceremonies. I had to take some of these smaller logs out of there. They were kind of starving the fire, but I think we got it going now. There we go, it's going nice and good now. Now that we've got this fire going, keeping us nice and warm in here, bigger. Might as well go check out our bathroom situation. It's gonna really suck if I have to go to the bathroom in the middle of the night. It is kind of far, but I guess I'm used to it. Living in a van, middle of nowhere. I'd imagine it's just some sort of pit toilet. Yep, not gonna lift that up. I don't know why I even thought about it. I don't wanna see it, I'm sure you don't either. We will let that stay a mystery. You can see the heat coming out of the top of our chimney there though. Matter of fact, now that I think about it, I actually kind of have to go to the bathroom.
Oh my gosh. It's so dark in here. Not bad. I do have a, a kettle heating up on top of the stove here. So I think I'm gonna make myself some coffee. And then I think pretty soon here, I'm gonna get started making some dinner. It's already so much warmer in here. And I think while I wait for that water to boil, I'm actually just gonna go get the food now, bring it in here. Should be fine. I'm gonna start cooking soon anyways. All right, got everything. Changed sweatshirts because I spilled something on my other one. I'll grab another jacket just in case I need it. So I think while I wait for that to boil, all right, we're gonna start prepping up some ingredients. In order to save myself bringing a bunch of spices out here, this is gonna be our rice pudding later. Kind of just put it all in one Ziploc bag. And then all of my spices for our stew are kind of just put in this. Save myself from bringing out 10 different uh, spices, but even with the door open, our stove is keeping it so warm in here. I think celery is one of my favorite things to cut. I think it's so satisfying. So this Hogan is owned by a woman named Shanna, and she opened this place up on her family's homestead in 2016 when her grandma passed away because she wanted to keep the traditions alive and share them with as many people as she could to kind of keep her grandmother's legacy alive, which is pretty cool. And along with her mother, they sought the approval of the elders in order to be able to share this place with people like me. And once they got their approval, they opened it up and are gracious enough to share their family traditions with anyone who travels through and wants to experience them. So, so shout out to Shanna and I will link this place in the description if anybody else wants to stay here, if you're ever traveling through Northern Arizona, because uh, it is really a cool experience. It's very interesting. And our water is definitely taking a long time to boil. It's steaming, but it's not boiling yet. That's all we gotta do in terms of prep. We got our garlic, onion, celery, potatoes, and carrots. And I think our water is finally hot enough to make myself some instant coffee. So I think I'm probably gonna get started on uh, cooking the stew because it takes about two hours to cook, especially over this fire. Let me get that nice and hot. A couple of the logs. And then once that gets going, start cooking. So I'm gonna try not to use pots and pans here because I think I gotta wash them in that wash bin if I do. So I'm gonna use my own so I can just throw them in my sink and not wash them like I typically do. Get that on there along with some oil. Let that get nice and hot. Very cozy vibe in here. Not gonna lie. I think that oil is just about hot enough. Good to put in our meat. And to the meat, we're just gonna sprinkle on some of that seasoning. Just about half of the mix we made. And in the seasoning mix is some salt, rosemary, thyme, paprika, marjoram, 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 however you say it, and then some pepper. So nothing too complicated, but we're just getting this meat nice and brown on all sides, and then we can move on to the next step. <sighs> My knee is on fire, it's so hot. I will say this thing is not getting as hot as I would like it. It's definitely cooking the meat, but it's not up to the temperature where I'd want it to be, and I'm not sure what is wrong, if I'm doing anything wrong, or if it just takes more time when cooking over a stove like this, but I don't know. We are cooking though. There we go, now it's getting nice and hot. And I think this meat is just about browned up enough, so. Go ahead and take that out of there. Set it aside. And then we can throw our celery and onions and garlic in there. And then once these cook down a little bit, we'll add the rest of the ingredients and let it simmer for a couple hours. And we got some dinner. All right, so now that the veggies are nice and cooked down, added a couple spoonfuls of tomato paste. And this recipe actually calls for red wine to be added into the mixture, but it is actually a Navajo law to not have alcohol or drugs on the land. So we're using some beef broth as a uh, substitute. Go ahead and add that in there. Looks a 
about, oop, that looks about right. Give that a quick stir, and then we'll just bring this mixture to a boil. Now that we've got that boiling, we can add our final ingredients, which is just some Worcestershire sauce, Worcestershire sauce, the rest of our spice blend, a couple bay leaves, our meat, along with the juices that have accumulated, and then our potatoes and carrots. Get it all incorporated together. Put the lid on that. Let that cook for about two hours. It smells absolutely heavenly in here. Grab the lantern out because it is starting to get kind of dark. Set that over there. We might have to get these other lights turned on soon, but it is beautiful outside. Finally, no clouds, which is nice. And the sunset, <laughs> look at that. That just looks incredible. It looks so cool. And I mean, if I'm going to be honest, this is as close as you're going to get to how it exactly was back in the day. Minus a little shed over here and that kind of stuff. Definitely gonna bring you guys back out here in like 30 minutes because that sunset is gonna be spectacular as long as those clouds don't cover it. Oh. Wow, it also left me five gallons of water in there, which is nice. That sunset is so bright. Sunset is the best time to look at mountains too because it lights them up so perfectly. And this right here is the shadow of my Hogan. <laughs> Makes it look absolutely massive. I mean, honestly, what an absolutely perfect night. Oh, I'm so excited to eat dinner too. This looks so good. Man, it really does start to get cold real quick at night. So cool with the light behind it, you can't see until you get in. It's kind of creepy. Boom! Our fire is absolutely raging. Oh, it feels so good. It's supposed to get down to, I think, around 25 degrees Fahrenheit tonight, which is this in Celsius. So not the coldest, but definitely be pretty uncomfortable without this thing. Ow. Get that handle on there. That way I can open it without burning myself. It smells so good. Cannot wait to eat. But that's the thing about stew, it takes a while to cook. So we still got just about an hour and a half before we can dig in. So just gonna hang out with a little bit of sunlight we have left. Gonna wait for dinner to finish. All right, so I had to take my hoodie off, my hat off, because it is so hot in here. It's probably 70 degrees inside and it is currently 30 degrees outside, so very toasty in here, very comfortable. But I think this stew is just about done. Boiling up nicely. Oh, it smells so good. Last thing we gotta do, is toss some of these frozen peas in there. And then get those mixed in. And the recipe that I'm following calls for cornstarch to be added, but to be honest, I'm not a fan of cornstarch. Adding it to a stew, I think it kind of ruins the flavor in my opinion. To each their own though. But I'll let those heat up for like five minutes and then we can do some dinner. I mean, I think while I'm waiting, I'm gonna get this rice pudding cooking so it's ready when I'm done. But I think I'm gonna do that over the Coleman stove because if I do it over the uh, furnace, it's gonna eat up a ton more wood and it's gonna take 10 times longer. So we'll just use this since they had it in here. Hopefully there's enough propane. And I'm not sure if this is gonna work since because of the way I packaged my rice and ingredients, but we'll see. So typically all this stuff is separated so you don't have the rice mixed with everything else. And basically in here I just have salt, sugar, rice, a little bit of nutmeg, and then a bunch of golden raisins. I wasn't thinking about it, but I really shouldn't have mixed this before because you're supposed to cook the rice and then add all the other stuff, but I'm just gonna throw it all in there and see how it comes out. And I just poured the water out of my pot because I'm gonna have to add that after. We'll see, maybe this is a better way of doing it. It'll come out better. So now we're gonna bring this to a boil and I didn't rinse my rice, whatever. Bring that to a boil, let the rice cook and hopefully this works. All we're waiting for that, it's dinner time. Look at that. Definitely didn't need any cornstarch, it's thick enough without it. And it's uh, kind of hard to get any kind of a temperature regulation on that stove over there. So let's do the best we can. This is so hot, I'm not even gonna try to take a bite. It's gonna burn my tongue. It is hot in here. Oh, it's so creepy. Open the door, let some cool air in. It is so dark outside. Oh, it's terrifying. Should lock that. I don't think I'm gonna add any more wood to the fire for the time being. <laughs> it's so hot in here. Alrighty, giving this stuff time to cool off. Cheers. 
But it is pretty cozy in here. It's not really like tent camping where you kind of feel like you're at the whim of the elements. I got a locked door and a solid wood structure around me. It's almost like being in a house. And our rice looks to be cooking up nicely. Maybe cooking it with all the ingredients in there will give it some extra flavor. Nice hearty dinner. Dinner done. I'm gonna have to turn off the uh, big overhead lights because uh running low on power and I want to make sure I can still charge my phone tonight. On this little power bank that they have. Because I told myself once I got here, I wasn't going to go back into the van. So I don't plan on going back into the van. But the rice looks like it's just about done. Steamy. Oh yeah. That's done. We can add some milk. Just about half of this carton. Or bottle. Give that a nice stir and then we'll cook this until it's like thick and a little bit creamy. Oh, and one more thing we gotta add. A little bit of vanilla extract. So that is pretty much exactly what we're looking for. And the last thing we need to do, crack an egg in there, cook it for another like three or four minutes. And the power bank has officially died, so that is my only light source remaining. But this rice pudding does smell pretty good. And there we go. After about two minutes, it's our final product. So I ended up just rinsing out the same bowl that I used for dinner for this rice. Save on some dishes. Less for me to do before I have to go to bed tonight. But not a bad camp dessert. Some rice pudding. And I'm definitely not looking forward to having to go pee. I'm very familiar with a lot of scary stories about the desert at night. So running out there by myself <laughs> just doesn't seem fun. But I know I'm going to have to. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's so good. It's almost like a nice oatmeal dessert is what it tastes like. But what I was saying is there's no way I'm going to be able to go through the night without waking up and having to pee. It's cooled down in here a little bit also. I haven't put a log on the fire in like 45 minutes. It's just embers right now. I'll probably pop one more on the fire before I go to bed. And that should be good enough. I'm not too worried about the cold. It's pretty well insulated in here. But I'm going to finish my absolutely divine rice pudding. And then clean up all of this mess. Do my dishes so I don't have to do them in the morning and get to bed. So I will see you guys in the morning. see me oh god it's because every single source of light i have is dead other than my flashlight it is currently just before sunrise and it is freezing cold in here <sighs> and i'm gonna go to the bathroom oh it is so cold but it was so hot last night when i went to bed that i had to take my sweatpants off because i was sweating maybe i can get the last little bit of juice out of this lantern Great night's sleep last night. I only had to get up and go to the bathroom once, right at the beginning of the night before I went to bed. And it wasn't too bad. It was actually kind of beautiful outside. I could partially see some stars through the clouds. I don't know why this is still on. It died on me last night, but since this floor is made of dirt, I accidentally stepped out and put my foot back in bed and got a bunch of dirt all on my bed. And also my pillow fell off into the dirt. So that was fun, but I'm gonna grab my flashlight because I don't know if the sun is actually up yet. I think I'm gonna tell a spooky story. It is cold, but sun is up, so don't need that. Oh, it's so much colder out here. I get back in there, I'm gonna see if there's still any embers left on the on the fire and throw another log on there. Hello, Mr. Outhouse. Oof. It's incredible how much warmer it is than that Hogan. And I didn't wake up once throughout the night to stoke the fire. I just didn't feel like it. So it is kind of cold in the Hogan, but it retained a lot of that heat pretty well. It is currently 28 degrees Fahrenheit, which is this in Celsius. So dark in here. I wonder if the furnace... Nope, we're completely out on that. I don't think I'm gonna restart the fire. This flashlight is so bright, but I do want a cup of coffee, so I think I'm gonna get out the Coleman stove again. So I don't really want to open the door, but seeing as I have completely run out of light, I feel like I kind of need to. It's just so much colder out here than it is in here. Turn that off. So this morning, we were having real coffee via my pour over, and I stuck a coffee filter in there because the only coffee that I had was like a finer grain of coffee, and it fits through the slits there, and I hate when my coffee's super, super grainy, so. I just popped in a filter and then uh, that should be fine. But it looks like the sun is just crusting over the hill.
Stunning. Man, this place really gets lit up in the morning. Sun shines directly through the store. It's a really interesting spot. It was dead silent last night. Not a single peep from uh, anything outside. No coyotes, no skinwalkers. And it was nice knowing that the door actually locked. How much that would stop anyone? Don't think it really would, but. Peace of mind. Also, for anyone wondering, no, I didn't waste my food. Grab my nice bag of leftovers here. I didn't eat it all last night. And it also just started flurrying out a bit and then it stopped. But it looks like there might be some snow off in the distance over that butte. I don't know if that's a butte or not, but. So this little pour over thing I got is actually kind of cool. You just set it right on top of your coffee cup and it has this little diffuser on it so that the water spread over the coffee evenly. And you take your water and you just pour it in there. After a little while, you should have a cup of coffee. Dripping out the bottom. You gotta be extra careful dropping stuff around here. The floor is made out of dirt. Now, got a nice hot cup of coffee. I didn't even think about it, but using this makes cleanup a lot easier. I just pull it out and throw it in the trash. Look at that, so easy. Give her a quick rinse. She's good as new. Also, I messaged the uh, ladies let me stay here last night, and she said, don't do the dishes because she's gonna have to wash them anyways. So, she said, just leave them in the basin. So, no one can accuse me of not doing my dishes. I did my dishes. <laughs> And I'm bringing home what I brought in here, but made it to the night in our traditional Navajo Hogan. And I didn't go back to the van once after we got the food. It's starting to snow a little bit again. Beautiful out here. I'm pretty sure we're technically in the Painted Desert, which is really beautiful. I was there when I was in Petrified Forest, and there's a reason they call it the Painted Desert. It looks like it's painted because there's so many different layers and colors through the landscape. I'll overlay a picture of the Painted Desert here, but I'm pretty sure we're technically within its borders. And it's so weird. All around me, I can like see separate storm cells where it's snowing slash raining. I don't know if you guys can see the snow falling. Very, very light. But like I can see one storm over there where it's snowing, one storm over there where it's snowing, and then a bigger one over there that just passed us where it's snowing. And I guess there's one above me. Maybe I'll catch a snowflake. Caught it. I feel like I could definitely catch one. They're coming down so slow. Caught it. I think I'm going to get out of here pretty soon. The sun is starting to warm me up, getting ready to go. So I'm going to finish my coffee, get myself packed up, and we're off. So as always, truly appreciate you guys watching. If you haven't already, think about clicking that subscribe button. It really does help out the channel. I will catch you guys next time. Bye.